Hi everybody, it's Emily, and it's time for Lesson 2, Metaphysical Hygiene, Maintaining Your Magic Maker, also known as you. Uh, metaphysical Hygiene, what is it? Why do you care? So, as we've explained before, magic is all about energy. It's about your intentions, tuning energy, and sending that energy into the world to manifest. Well, if you're a mess, your magic's going to be a mess. So you have to maintain your energy. And it really is as simple as that. So the first thing is focus. In most traditional metaphysical practices, you're going to get a lot of, and you must meditate, you must learn to ch calm your mind, calm the monkey mind, the chatter the whole Zen thing, which is great if that works for you. I'm a little highly strung. My brain doesn't really turn off. So traditional kind of Zen no mind meditation doesn't work for me. Uh, there are many, many types of meditation out there. I generally do walking meditation where I let movement settle and focus my mind. But the real key is focus, and calm. It's not necessarily about meditation specifically. We must learn to focus because intention is set by using focus. So before you can start doing spell work, you need to learn to focus your mind. You need to learn how to focus on one clear crystal intention entirely. If you're in a place where you are distracted, where you're thinking about a million things at once, where you're trying to multitask, maintaining your focus long enough to tune your intention and actually do effective magic is going to be very, very difficult. And like many things, the way to get good at it is practice. You have to do it over and over again. Meditation is a great way that has worked for millennia for hundreds of thousands of people. If that works for you? fantastic. If it doesn't, that's kind of fine. Uh, things like arts and crafts, uh, like knitting is incredibly meditative, uh, doing Sudoku, kind of certain types of puzzles, um, painting. Uh, video games are not a great one for maintaining your focus. Yes, I understand that you can have great focus while playing a video game. I've lost many, many weeks of my life to World of Warcraft. Um, that's neither here nor there. So, uh, your focus activity has to be about your mind. And usually it's going to be something that's either physical movement, exercise, brain concentration exercises, not things that are going to distract and overstimulate you. There is a very fine line between focus and not quite distraction, but hyper-focus maybe? I don't know. When you're playing video games or you're watching a movie, you're being transported somewhere else. When you're reading a book, you're going somewhere else. That's not the type of focus we're talking about. That's a different thing. This is really holding a singular thought in your mind in its totality. That's the key to actually doing effective magic. And so that is what focus exercises, concentration exercises, meditations, that sort of thing is for. Um, like I said, there's a lot of different things out there. I encourage you to explore the many, many options that are out there. Um, there are a lot of really wonderful apps these days. Uh, Calm, Headspace, Budify, um, Liberate, I think is another one. But there's a bunch of different kind of meditation, concentration, quieting your mind kind of apps that can really help you get to a place where you can do that type of meditative focus. Um, I'm a big fan of guided meditation, so I like Headspace and, and apps like that for those different ways of kind of training your mind, uh, particularly if you have difficulty with traditional like sitting still for 15 minutes. Yeah, I can't really do that. 
Uh, I will distract myself with something because that's the way my brain works. Uh, so yeah, start with finding a way that works for you to focus your mind and to calm kind of distracted thoughts. The next thing, of course, mental health. As I said at the top of the lesson, if you're a mess, your magic's going to be a mess. For some people, it's a matter of taking time to do self-care, you know, taking time to make sure that you're eating right, that you do have some time out of your day to go and exercise, go for a walk. It doesn't have to be, you know, some, it does not have to be Pinterest perfect, okay? You can see the room behind me. My life is not Pinterest perfect. Um, <laughs> not even a little tiny bit. So what you have to do is just figure out how to create your own stable mental foundation. If you want to do magic and have it turn out, you have to be relatively stable in yourself. Like, your life doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. You don't have to have, you know, a clear room where you can have a sacred temple with all of your tools where you can be utterly silent and non-distracted and never have anybody interfere. Life doesn't generally work that way unless you already have enough means that you don't really need to do magic at that point. Um, we're trying to make our lives better because no one's life is perfect. What you do need is five minutes of concentration time to do magic. You know, take the time to tune your own attitude and how you think about things. You know, as we talked a little bit during the last lesson about, you know, we have our thoughts and our intentions and they tune our energy. That energy then interacts with the world and attracts similar energies and sympathetic energies. So if we want good things, we have to figure out how to tune our energies to attract good things. You know, I personally have depression. Sometimes it's a real struggle to not effervesce depression energy all over my household. And that, that's not good for anybody. So part of my metaphysical hygiene is taking the time that if I'm in a depressive episode to stop, assess what I'm doing, and either take a time out so I can take care of myself or if I'm able to, to retune my energy to be more positive, more productive, better in line with my goals. Um, only you can know what your energy should be like. You know, we do the things we have to, that we can, to help us to be the people we want to be in the world. We, you know, Hopefully you're coming to magical practice because you want to do good things in the world, to make positive change in the world, both for your own, you know, personal interest and the interest of those around you. Maybe it's less altruistic than that. That's fine too. If you just want to be happier, that's a worthy goal. Uh, but if you want to be happier, you want your life to be better, you do have to not poison your own energy. You, know, you don't have to be happy all the time. I'm sure as shit not. Uh, you don't have to be, you know, super positive, positive vibes only kind of thing. Just screw that. Uh, that's way too much pressure and it's unsustainable. But taking the time to just not be an asshole, not, you know, make life difficult for yourself and those around you. That's a big deal, actually. Something as simple as, you know, not, you know, shouting at your partner when you get home from a bad day at work, you know, maybe being a little bit more open, being a little more transparent, like, hey, I had a really bad day. I feel really crappy. Can, can you just like, leave me alone for a little while? Or can you make dinner so that I don't have to, you know, ask for help, that kind of stuff. Very simple. Not asking anybody to be perfect because it doesn't work that way. But try when you find yourself in a, a negative uh, 
energy space to take the time you need to either deal with it or move forward from it. I know that's actually a really big ask. I mean, really, really big ask. But if you want to do magic effectively, you kind of have to. Because if you do a bunch of magic from a place of pain and suffering, that's going to undermine the positive energies you're trying to bring into your life. Now, of course, if you're casting a hex from a place of pain and suffering, well, then you're probably in the right place. We'll talk about that in many lessons. Grounding and centering. Grounding and centering is probably the most fundamental metaphysical hygiene practice. It's something that I do literally every day, multiple times a day. What does that mean? This is another one of those fun things where every practitioner is going to define grounding and centering a little bit differently. Uh, some of them will even consider it one thing, ground and center. There's grounding and there's centering. They're different things. That's why it's two words, different things. Grounding is specifically, the way I use the term, the act of allowing excess energies, negative energies, foreign energies that are a part of your auric fields for whatever reason, and allowing them to drain down into the earth and be absorbed and neutralized, hence grounding. And you can kind of think of it like grounding electricity. You know, there's too much energy in the circuit, goes to the ground fault interrupter, grounds, neutralizes, doesn't electrocute you. Hey, very simple. Centering is a little bit more complicated. So I talked a little bit in the last lesson about your energetic body. Now, in a perfect, healthy state, your physical body and your energetic body should be perfectly aligned. You know, if you look at it straight on, it, it's the same thing. Things happen. We have a bad day at work. We get cut off in traffic. Little bumps and knocks that we kind of experience throughout the day can actually misalign our energetic body and our physical body. It can, you know, if when you feel like that really spacey, disconnected, kind of overloaded kind of headspace, that is often a symptom that your energetic body is out of alignment. And what you have to do is find your energetic core. For a lot of people, it's kind of the solar plexus, kind of center of the body sort of thing. Um, for other people, it can be different. Some people, it's like the base of the spine. Some, it's the heart. Some, it's the head. But for most people, it tends to be the center of kind of the guts um, of the body. And you basically visualize your body's your physical and energetic bodies pulling into that core and realigning themselves. That's grounding and centering. And what that does energetically is at any kind of given moment in time, we're interacting with a million things and it affects us as people, as energetic beings. And if we want to do magic to be in the most stable place, in the clear place where our intention is unaffected by the things that are happening around us, we have to ground and center. And so by getting rid of negative energies, foreign energies, things that are not aligned with your intention, you're making sure there's nothing that's going to interfere with your magic intention that you're about to set. When you center, you're ensuring that you have full access to all of your energy. When your energy bodies are aligned, they flow and everything feels good and you have access to all of your energy. When they're misaligned, you don't have access to everything. Some things are tied up in knots, some things are twisted, some things are broken off, and you just don't have as access to the same amount of energy. Or maybe it's gonna have like funky, kind of like, at, like when you leave food in the fridge and it starts to taste like onion because you left an 
half an onion next to it, it interferes. It's no longer the, you know, delicious, you know, chow mein it was the night before. It's now weird, cheesy. Um, yeah, sometimes I weird myself out. Um, but so if you want your energy to do what you want it to do, it's got to be aligned. It's got to be clear. It's got to be aligned. So you ground and center before you do magic. Um, the trick with that, of course, is figuring out what that looks like for you. you know, the traditional kind of grounding and centering is the kind of the roots down, branches up meditation. And it basically, you know, you close your eyes, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, and envision roots growing from your feet down, down, down into the earth reaching down, allowing your body to become one with the earth and to allow all the negative energy, all the foreign energies, anything you've picked up throughout the day to flow down, down, down your body, down through the roots, down into the soil of the earth to be neutralized. And you take your arms and you think of them as branches of a tree and you reach them up, up, up into the stars and you allow the energies of the stars to come into your body to flow, to realign and center your energies. It's a little bit sparkle motion, but it works pretty well. If that doesn't work for you, and honestly, it doesn't really work for me that great. Um, you have to figure out what does grounding look like for you? What does centering look like for you? Um, I personally am very, very earth energy aligned. So I think of myself as like sinking into the earth and like, calcifying into the bedrock becoming one with the bedrock or like down to lava because that's that's the kind of energy that makes me feel chill and grounded um and i actually allow that to recenter me and let like the crystalline structure of granite realign my crystal structure um i have a friend that i know that is an entirely air oriented human it's amazing and I don't really understand it, but when she grounds, she literally grounds into like the jet stream, like the air currents in the stratosphere. Uh, instead of envisioning, you know, her body connecting with the earth below her, she literally lifts into the sky above her and becomes one with the air currents and the clouds. And that sounds great. And it kind of gives me a headache just to think about it, but that's what works for her. So, you know, if you're more of a water ba water baby, maybe you think of diving deep into like the Marianas Trench to get to the depths of the very deepest ocean to allow all the negative energies to flow away and be neutralized and consumed by little bottom feeding bacteria kind of things. And it's all up to you. Um, if you're super visual, you definitely visualize yourself like becoming one with a tree or whatever. Um, I know some folks that will actually center, um, by literally like tapping their bodies, like reminding themselves that their energy belongs in their physical bodies. <laughs> um, there's no right or wrong. There's a zillion ways of doing it and try a bunch out. See how it feels. Does it work? Does it not work? Do you feel ridiculous? Do you feel ridiculous? But it works anyway. Sometimes that's fun. Uh, I, <laughs> I was once with a group and we literally, we were camping for a couple of days at this kind of retreat sort of thing. And at the end to kind of release our energy from the space so that whomever would have it next would not have to deal with our kind of leftover residuals. We cleanse the space by going in a big circle and doing the hokey pokey. <laughs> And it worked really well. It was utterly ridiculous. Did the hokey pokey, saying I'm a little teapot, and had a group hug, and that's how we ended our thing. Because it grounded whatever leftover stuff we had, realigned us ready to go back into kind of mundane space, settled everything down. Um, so it's very much up to you. Same thing with centering, like I said, not everyone's center is the kind of dan tian, which is a concept of the energy center in Chinese medicine, um, or your root chakra, or you know whatever, whatever the book you're reading today says is the center. 
is it? Maybe, maybe not, you know. And it is also possible over time your energy center can shift. Um, when I was a little baby witch many, many years ago, um, I was very, very stuck in my head. And so all of my work was up in my brain. And so all of my energy center was up in my head. Over the years, I've kind of changed my practice and gotten much more grounded and practical and, you know, doing a lot more indigenous traditions. And that's centered it much lower in my body. I also have a much healthier relationship with my body, but that's a whole different thing. Um, so try centering in different locations in your body. Imagine pulling your energy into different places and how does it feel? Like you're not going to hurt yourself if you center into the wrong place, but it's just going to feel funny. Um, you, like for me, if I try to pull my energy someplace that isn't my center, I will feel kind of nauseated and like not quite panicky, but like that pressure kind of feeling uh, where the energy is wrong and I've got to sink it back to the correct center of where I actually am and then I feel better. So it's very much about how you feel and learning how to tell how you feel. And in a minute, we're going to talk about ways of checking your alignment and your energy. But grounding and centering, pretty much the most fundamental thing to do before you really get into magic. That brings us to daily practice. Now, daily practice gets a really bad rap because it's hard. <laughs> you know, doing anything where you're building a new habit is really hard. Um, you know, I have a morning attunement and an evening protection that I do every day. And I have been doing both of them every day for at least 15 years, if not longer. Uh, the sleep, the, the thing that I do at night is a sleep protection that I've been doing for over 20 years. Uh, the morning thing is a later addition, but I can't function if I don't do these things at this point, because I'm so used to tuning my energy in a particular way. You don't have those habits yet. Um, or if you do, awesome. You've got a great place to start. Um, but you've got to think about how you want to move throughout your day as an energetic being. What type of energy do you want to bring to your day, whatever it's going to look like? Um, and there's basically a couple of different ways of doing that. And it's largely cleansings and attunements. Um, you can almost think of it as cleansings and blessings. Um, just like grounding and centering is getting rid of what doesn't belong and centering is pulling things back where it does belong. Cleansing is further getting rid of stuff that doesn't belong and attunements or blessings is about bringing the energy you do want. And that's the yin yang of metaphysical hygiene, getting rid of what doesn't belong there and tuning yourself for what you do want to be there. So self cleansings. This is, you know, the metaphysical equivalent of taking a shower, brushing your teeth, you know, putting on clean clothes. Um, when you, when you do a metaphysical cleansing, what it is really doing is it's taking energy and allowing it to literally clean stuff that doesn't belong. You know, as we move through the world, you know, <laughs> pre-COVID days, when I took the bus downtown and went into an office building, I would come in contact with a lot of different people over the course of my day and a lot of different types of energies. There's, you know, the person on the bus who didn't get any sleep and is super cranky. Uh, there's the unhoused person at the bus stop when you get downtown who is hungry and cold. It's, you know, the the neglected building that has been running down slowly for the last 30 years. Um, it's the vibrant new construction that is all full of potential. All of these different energies we encounter 
affect us and they leave schmutz behind you know same way if we walk through car exhaust you have little micro particles of car exhaust all over you can tell when you wash your face at the end of the day and it's all gross uh, energetically we have the same kind of thing when you sleep your dreams do energetic things and so in the morning you want to make sure you are settling anything unsettled you know particularly if you if you've got the kind of sleep cycle where your alarm clock goes off when you're in the middle of a dream and you wake up super disoriented uh taking the time to make sure that you're not bringing the energy from the fight you had with your friend in your dream to your day that's, that's not helpful uh so you want to cleanse that uh when I do cleansings for this type of thing, I like to couple it with the mundane cleansing action I'm taking. When I'm literally like brushing my hair, I'll envision the brush not only, you know, brushing out any tangles I've got, but brushing any negative or unnecessary or unwanted energies also out to then be grounded. You know, brushing my teeth, same thing, and literally removing the energetic residue that doesn't belong anymore taking the shower you're literally washing off whatever doesn't belong there you know whatever your morning hygiene looks like add the metaphysical component you don't have to reinvent the wheel you don't need to add an extra 20 minutes to your morning routine who's got time for that i have things to do it's hard enough to get time to drink my coffee <laughs> i can't add an hour of meditation and cleansing rituals at the beginning of my day that's not happening um so there's a bunch of different ways that you can do these types of cleansings like i said you can couple it with any kind of mundane thing you're doing literally when you wash your hands with soap you can literally tune the soap so that you're washing off energy that doesn't belong as well um in a few lessons we'll talk a little bit more about like enchanting things to be a little extra bang for your buck that's fun. Um, sometimes you need something a little bit more. That's when we get into things like asperging or smoke cleansing, sensing, that kind of thing. So asperging, if you're not familiar with the term, is literally the act of like sprinkling charged water on things. And charged water is a really amazing, versatile tool um, where it's literally water you know, it can just be literal tap water that, you know, water is the universal solvent. It's got natural cleansing properties. It's water. Doesn't have to be special. Or you can take that same water and you can like leave it out under moonlight for a night under the full moon and you get moon water. You can add a little bit of like salt to it and then you've got holy cleansed water. You can leave it on an altar for a deity and then you have deity charged water you know there's all kinds of, you can infuse herbs into waters you can do all kinds of things with it where it can go from very very simple to really quite complex um and there's things like florida water that are whole potions essentially sensing or smoke cleansing is kind of what it says on the tin where you have a vessel and you have a smoldering herb or incense or something and you literally use the smoke and you waft it around to cleanse things um, the traditional native american smudging ceremony is a specific cultural form of smoke cleansing i don't use the term smudging for what i do because i'm not trained in those native american ceremonies technically if i'm doing certain cleansings uh, in the curandarismo tradition that i am trained in that i could technically call smudging because central america is still a part of indigenous america uh, and it's just the translation of different words using a saumerio versus smudging it's just a translation issue um but it's a really great way of doing basic cleansings that are very very effective um you know if you've had a little bit too much going on and you don't maybe have the the full mental concentration to like visualize the energies like coming off and doing the, what they need to do you can use things like the waters or smoke or incense or even sound to help break up negative energies and pull them away. Or if it's smoke, you know, pull it away. <laughs> um, I will 
talk a lot more about cleansings of various sorts when we get into metaphysical defense because that's when the rubber meets the road for cleansings. Uh, but basic stuff is really add it to your shower, add it to your teeth brushing, you know, think about it when you wash your hands, as you normally do throughout the course of your day. If you feel like your energy is not where you want it to be, cleanse. And then you need to attune. Every time you remove energy, you have to replace it with something positive. Uh, otherwise you leave a vacuum and bad things can happen. Nature abhors a vacuum. Uh, and opportunistic things take advantage of them. It's not, not good. And we'll talk more about that in a few months. Um, but yeah, once you've cleansed, you want to attune the energies to what you actually want to bring into your day. The easiest way to do that is really to just think about it. You know, hey, today I know I've got a meeting that's really important. I need to make sure that I'm super competent. Uh, I need to make sure that I'm calm and not anxious. I need to make sure that I don't miss anything super important. So I'm going to bring calm competence into my day. And you can literally think about that energy and bring it into yourself. And we'll talk about specific ways to do that in just a minute. Um, and the other thing is gratitude and offerings. Um, in the Kurandarisa tradition, pretty much everything we do is cleansings and offerings. That's what we do all day, every day, over and over again. Everything is some form of cleansing and or offering. Um, offerings are super simple. Uh, it doesn't have to be like big altars and candles and food and flowers and incense. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Something very, very simple like you know, as you leave your house, give thanks to, you know, the things that have helped you get where you are and then go about your day. Very, very simple bit of positive intention to send out into the world. Um, I like to do things like I'll do weekly incense offerings to my metaphysical allies and I'll, you know, I'll take either a stick of incense or I'll get a charcoal where I burn resin and I'll put the incense on there and say to all of my allies, I thank you for all you have done for me, all you do for me, and all you will do for me in the future. To any potential obstacles in my path, I ask that you accept this offering and not become my enemy. And I do that once a week. It's very, very simple. It takes a minute and a half. And it's just, you know, gratitude and a blessing. And it's nice. And it helps tune my energies to be a little bit more positive. So, Kind of a sample of what a daily routine could look like. Maybe in the morning, maybe you do five, ten minutes of meditation, maybe while you're in the shower. You can then do a little bit of self-cleansing, an energy alignment throughout the day. Maybe you're going to check on your energies, realign it if you need to. Do a little extra cleansing if something's, you know, gone a bit awry. Then before bed, maybe you're going to do another self-cleansing, another energy alignment, maybe a sleep protection. Sounds like a lot, but once you actually get used to doing this kind of stuff, I mean, it's just living a magical life, letting yourself be part of the magical world and letting the magical world be a part of you. It, it doesn't have to be big, formal, time-consuming things. It's, it should be reflex action almost. So things you can actually do as exercises to do these things. So for an energy alignment, this is something you might do uh, before you leave your house or you know, maybe during if you are taking like the bus as a commuter, if you close your eyes and you take a nap on the bus where you're really doing an energetic alignment, um, various and sundry things. I have been known to do this in the restroom at work. Whatever you need to do when you need to do it, if you can. Um, but choose a type of energy that you want to bring into your day. So, oh, I was saying to me, calm competence. One way to do that is basically you visualize an energy ball. And you think of those energies coalescing 
bringing energies from outside, from inside your body into a central concentration and you tune it with your intention and you think calm confidence or luck or health or whatever it is you're trying to do. And then when you feel like you're ready and it's all tuned, you literally bring it into your body and let it absorb into your body through wherever your energetic center is. The lock is fine. And you allow that energy to move through you. And now you are tuned for your day or whatever it is you're doing next. I've definitely been known to do this before big meetings. I'll, you know, take a quick break. Maybe take a walk around the building. Maybe use the restroom. Maybe grab a coffee. And literally, I'll, uh, I will stir my intention into my tea a lot and then drink my tea throughout the very important meeting that I have. Um, very simple things. And it just allows you a little extra cushion of positive intention and energy to help you do whatever it is you need to do and deal with whatever might come your way. As you're moving through the world, sometimes we need to assess ourselves. How am I doing? Is my energy still in alignment? Hey, you know, maybe I, I had some frustrations. Am I, am I out of alignment? Do I need to do a centering? Do I need to ground? One of the ways to do this, um, you just... Take a moment, find a quiet place where you have a few minutes to yourself. The aforementioned restroom break is great because it's got a little door with a lock on it. And we'd have to do that anyway. But take a moment, ground, center, and depending on how you learn to feel energies, and everybody does this differently. Like for me, I feel energy through my hands very, very much. I have to physically kind of run my hands over my energy body, you know, not quite touching, but just feeling. And I can feel, you know, if, if something feels cold where it shouldn't, or feels staticky, or if I feel like there's pressures or concentrations in the wrong places, then I'll take some time to really ground a little more thoroughly and I might do another alignment to help me kind of move forward and see where I need to be. Uh, for some folks they can feel it in their heads like not quite like a, a clairvoyance where they don't see themselves but they can almost like see like an overlay of their reality and they can kind of sense where things might be off or energies are in the wrong place or not flowing the way they should. Um, by the way, like the whole of like Chinese medicine and chi and meridians and things is all based on these types of energy flows. So if this is something that appeals to you, there's whole like PhD level study options for that kind of thing that are way beyond the scope of this course. Uh, but take some time, learn how you feel energy and learn to read your own energetic body. And it's a great way to practice reading energies because you've always got you. But take a moment, you know, and also think about your physical state when you're doing an energy check. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Those things can affect your energy flow a lot more than you might think. Um, but take some time, do some energy checks, do some energy alignments, and your homework essentially from this lesson is create a daily practice. Figure out what are the very kind of basic things that you can do to do a little self-cleansing, a little grounding and centering, and some energy alignments, some energy checks. What, what does that look like for you? What type of things are you already doing where you can add this component where it's not gonna like <laughs> make your life overly difficult? What can you, incorporate into what you're already doing as part of your mundane life or current magical practices to heighten them to improve your own metaphysical hygiene to help make sure that you have a stable platform for actually going out and performing magic once you've kind of formulated a daily practice or something that you aspire as a daily practice don't set yourself up for failure don't set yourself up for like three hours of extra stuff to do every day. You're not going to do it. You know you're not going to do it. Uh, but once you've kind of set up a reasonable daily practice, try to do it 
for seven days in a row. If you're not already doing a lot of things as daily habits, you're going to fail. Let me just tell you. Uh, of the students that I have had, <laughs> I don't think a single one of them has actually succeeded in completely doing a daily practice every day for seven days, their first try. Uh, most people will get two or three days and then they'll get distracted or something will come up or, you know, the kids will get sick, the dog has to go to the vet, whatever. Something is going to throw you out of whack. You're not going to be able to do it. That's okay. Not only is that okay, that is expected. Daily practice is building habits. Building habits is hard. If building habits was easy, we would have no diet or anti-smoking industry. It's hard. Uh, so definitely, if you try it, and it doesn't quite work the way you want it to, or you hoped it would, do not beat yourself up about it. That just means you're a human being. Pay attention to what bits tripped you up. What were the bits that were harder than you thought they would be? What were the things that you kept forgetting? What are the things that made you completely forget you were going to do it at all? Those are the things to pay attention to because that's what's crying for attention. Those are the places where maybe there's some long-standing thing you need to address. Maybe there's some healing that needs to happen. Maybe you're trying to do something because it sounds like it's correct, but it doesn't actually work for you. Try something else. Find out what does work for you. The absolute key is what actually works for you. So with that, I'll wrap up. Um, the uh, energy check walkthrough and the energy alignment walkthrough is going to be in the description of the video down below, uh, along with my email and anything that you need. So yeah, um, the next lesson is going to be sacred space and divination. So I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.